Well, the second episode came out last night. I watched it, gave it some thought. It's not a bad show by any means, so far. But I don't think it's entirely faithful to the source material either. If you're new to the show and haven't played the games, as I said in my previous review, which you can check out in the description if you'd still like to be among the first to see it, then there's a good chance that you'll enjoy the absurdly slow pace that the show is going in. There were moments in the episode that worked really well, so I'd like to discuss those first. Let's keep the good and the bad separate, shall we? There were a couple of standout scenes for me. First and foremost, the beginning scene in Jakarta, where the scientist lady is taken in by authorities to perform an autopsy on a cordyceps victim. The scene is done quite well. It reminds me a lot of Craig Mazin's work on Chernobyl, and you can see him implementing his style of filmmaking into the series effectively. And I appreciated the world building here, especially since in the last episode they mentioned Jakarta as being where the infection started. At least from what I recall. We get to see some pretty awesome acting on display as well when the lady tells the high-ranking military official that there is no hope of any kind for a cure or a vaccine or anything. And that because the other Cordyceps victims have yet to be found, the only solution is to carpet bomb the city and kill everyone inside. <laughs> Amazing scene, and it really amplifies that feeling of dread and hopelessness that you get. Then we get to sit through about seven or eight minutes of Joel and Tess obsessing over Ellie's wound from being bitten and deciding whether they should kill her or continue their mission. This scene is kind of boring. There are some funny quips here about sandwiches. I actually chuckled a bit, but I found myself eager for the scene to end so that we could get a move on to them actually traveling. And when they do, we're already about 20 minutes into the episode. This is the problem I have with the show. There's too much filler. There's too much, oh, by the way, this happens. If the goal is to get us invested in the main characters, then they've still got a long way to go. You can see hints of the budding relationship between Joel and Ellie bit by bit as they continue to converse with each other, such as the hotel scene where they're wading through water and her stating she can't swim, a fun little nod to Joel pushing Ellie around on a pallet in the games, but those moments are sparingly used. In terms of production design, I'm 100% sold. They put so much incredible detail into the nature-reclaimed ruins of the city as well as staying true to the atmosphere of the games that I actually kind of paused the show to take a look at it. They've made changes to the Cordyceps strain in that there are no longer spores you have to avoid by wearing a gas mask but the infection comes about when you're bitten by an infected individual. And what's interesting about it is that the Cordyceps acts as a hive mind, which I'm not entirely against. I didn't hate it. There's a scene where the characters are overlooking a courtyard full of infected people, writhing around on the ground in agonizing pain. And what's cool is that they're moving in unison like a hive mind. This moment was probably the biggest standout for me. It's really terrifying to watch what the fungus does to people. It's kind of sickening in a great way. I think this was amazing. Now on the subject of Joel, he really doesn't have much going on in this episode, except for when he's involved in the action. Most of the dialogue is with Tess and Ellie, and with Joel just kind of standing in the background most of the time. I expected that to happen, no surprise there. I can see what Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann are trying to do, but I don't know. Ever since I heard that they were intentionally making Joel softer than in the games, I, I can't seem to connect with him in the way that I'd like. And believe me, I really want to love this show. I, I want to love it so much. But you see, the problem with changing the personality of a character like Joel is that when you're directly adapting his dialogue from the game into the show, it has a different, almost diminished effect. Like when he says, it's over Tess in the game, he's just like, it's over Tess. But like at the end of the episode in the show, he's just like, Tess, it's over, okay? It's over. And it felt far less compelling coming out of Pedro Pascal's mouth. It just doesn't feel real. Because his personality is supposed to be completely different. The desperation that both characters feel when Tess reveals that she's infected, it's just not the same. And neither is the way that Tess dies either, but I'm not against that. Again, I'm not entirely against every change they make, but one has to question why these changes are made for the betterment of the show. I don't see how these changes are servicing the fans or newcomers, but eh, that's just me. And as much of an effort as I've put forth in trying, I just can't get on board with Bella Ramsey. She is no doubt an excellent actress. And I'll never forget the role she played in Game of Thrones, but just because someone is a great actor or actress, it doesn't mean that they can play every role that you give them, even if you're a big fan. I think that they should have given more thought to the casting of Ellie, and that is especially true if they intend to make her the main character in future seasons. At this point, ask yourself, are you on board with Bella Ramsey carrying future seasons? In terms of action, we got plenty of that this episode. We get to see the clickers, which are the more advanced versions of the Cordyceps strain victims that have been completely overtaken mentally and physically by the fungus. 
which sprouts mushroom-like fungi from their faces and obliterates their eyesight. I think they did a good job of explaining to the audience that they rely on sound to hunt prey rather than vision. It's done naturally and in the midst of the conflict, and the clickers themselves look horrifying and awesome. Neil Druckmann, for all of his flaws, does a great job heightening the tension of the fight against the Cordyceps as the characters struggle to keep quiet and defeat them. However, what's with all the handheld shaky cam stuff going on? Sometimes it can get pretty annoying to watch. It's not terrible, but you can tell in some scenes it's just like, wow, why are you bobbing the camera up and down so heavily? Like, come on. Just a fair warning, if you have a weak stomach, prepare yourself because there are little to no smooth shots in this episode. Sometimes it's hard to see what's going on. It reminds me of the Transformers movies and their fight scenes where you're just like, Hey, was that my robot that just got decapitated, or was that his leg, or was that the enemy robot? Or like in the Hunger Games movie, where Katniss is walking around and the cameraman is stumbling all over the place, barely able to capture her on camera footage. It's pretty amazing. I hope that they use that style of cinematography a little less in future episodes, though I won't hold my breath. Overall, I thought the episode was pretty good. It suffers from the same flashback problem from the previous episode, and after watching the teaser for the third episode next week, it looks like they're going to keep doing that. I haven't forgotten that we eventually get Abby as a main character, and I'm really not looking forward to that. And if you've played the games, you know why. But I think that if you are a fan of the games, you should give the show a chance and judge it for yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's just my opinion. And I'm not going to lie and say that it's a bad show, because it's not. But to be aware of the flaws is the best thing that you can do. Feedback is important, and this is Neil Druckmann's baby. We all know where this is eventually going to lead, but if the show picks up the pace just a tad, and they give Joel more room to develop, and us more of a reason to care about him and Ellie, then I think that this series can succeed, and I want it to succeed. I'm going to keep watching it and giving my thoughts on it, but I'm just not certain how I feel about it yet. That being said, I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, then like and share the video. Consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. I look forward to seeing you all again next time.